the Puma DV8 Nitro and the New Balance 1080 version 11. Two shoes from the new school of Max Cushion, where Max Cushion doesn't have to mean Max Slow. They each weigh in at about the same weight and have about the same heel drop and about the same stack heights. So which one is better? Let's go for a run and find out. Eight point zero one miles in the Puma DV8 Nitro, and eight point zero two miles in the 1080 version 11 on the day before that. For each of these days, going for a nice and easy run, while also throwing a couple of strides in each run, so that way I can put these two shoes through the paces. Now, before I tell you about the Puma DV8 Nitro versus the 1080 version 11, I do want to go over some disclosures. These are each shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent me them. No one's paying me to make this video. No one's paying me to include either of these shoes in a video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma DV8 Nitro and the 1080 version 11. First, let's go over some specs. The Puma DV8 Nitro comes in at 9.4 ounces for a US men's size nine, and it's got 32 millimeters of stack height in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of that new nitro foam from Puma. They're using a nitrogen infused process similar to other nitro foams that we've seen from other brands, but that's not the only thing they're putting into this shoe. They've also got a heel clip in the back for some added stability, plus a carbon fiber plate that they're calling Inno plate in this shoe. On the outsole, we've got Puma Grip, a nice and tacky rubber outsole pattern, plenty of coverage for you. And on the upper, we've got a very breathable material throughout the entire shoe, minimal overlays in here, a uh, very slightly padded tongue that is gusseted so it's not gonna move around on you, and some bumper pads in the heel to give the shoe some extra comfort and to keep the shoe onto your foot as you're running. In the 1080 version 11, we've got a 9.3 ounce shoe with 30 millimeters of stack height in the heel and an eight millimeter drop, just like in the DV8 Nitro, coming in at 22 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this, we've got nothing but that beautiful fresh foam XF bouncy midsole material from New Balance in here. On the outsole, we've got a bunch of rubber coverage, just like in the DV8 Nitro, protecting that foam that you're gonna be running on. And in the back, we've got what New Balance is calling the Ultra Heel, which is this giant flare back here with a neoprene-like material that is very comfortable on the heel, especially for any of you guys who have that Achilles irritation. Also adding to the comfort of the 1080 version 11 is that wonderful knit material that they've been using. Very stretchy, very breathable, but yet still keeps your foot nice and secure while you're running. I'm a big fan of the knit material in the 1080 version 11. So what is it like to run in each of these shoes? I'll say that these shoes are both very bouncy shoes, but they're bouncy in very different ways. In the 1080 version 11, you've got Fresh Foam X, which feels in a lot of ways like a regular running shoe midsole that you've run in before, but it does a very good job of not only absorbing impact, but it's also bouncy, a little bit springy. So as you're running, you're not kind of squishing into foam, but you're hitting the ground and then popping off in a very pleasant way. And the eight millimeter drop on this shoe, I think works really well for the kinds of paces that I think that this shoe is intended for, kind of your daily training, your everyday runs, but also some of your longest runs as well. The DV8 Nitro is also a very bouncy shoe, but bouncy in the way that Nitro foams tend to be bouncy. Now, some other brands that have shown us Nitro foams or this type of construction in their foams in the past are Skechers Performance. We've seen it in shoes like the Razor 3, which that's a little bit different because I believe they use nitrogen and carbon dioxide in their foam making process. So that changes the characteristics of that foam a little bit, but it gives you an idea if you run in that shoe or in Brooks, they've given us DNA Flash where they're using just nitrogen, which is I think what they're doing for the DV8 Nitro as well. And that is a little bit firmer than the Skechers Performance, but also still a very bouncy, very exciting type of foam. And the way that I'd kind of 
replace the nitro foam from Puma is that I think it's a little bit more firm than the foam that we've seen from Skechers Performance, but not quite as firm as the foam that we're seeing from Brooks in DNA Flash. It kind of sits right in the middle there. And so what I get from it is, again, it's absorbing impact from the road as well, but it does it kind of in a much quicker way. Uh, so the absorption isn't quite as nice. It isn't quite as plush when you, you land and hit the ground in this foam, but I feel like the spring back is a lot faster. So it's a little bit more lively when you are hitting the ground in this shoe. But because of the way that this foam works, it doesn't become what I think this shoe is supposed to be until you start to pick up the pace just a little bit. Now you don't have to get super fast in the shoe, especially with the carbon fiber plate, that's what you might be thinking. But when you are getting up to say a moderate pace, a little bit faster than easy, all the way up to like marathon pace and up to threshold pace, that I think is really the sweet spot for this foam and the way they put it into this shoe and along with that carbon fiber plate, and that's when you're really getting the bounce. Now, I did mention that carbon fiber plate and you're not getting like a super springy carbon feel. Like if you run in a Vaporfly, for example, it's not gonna feel like that. There's carbon in here, but it's not super aggressive. It's not super assertive. I think it's really working well with that foam to not only give you stability, so that way when you're hitting the ground in it's taller stack height shoe, you're not rocking around all over the place. I think it's working in a little bit more subtle of a way to kind of roll you through that foot strike because it is intended for those longer runs. In terms of overall comfort, I think what both of these shoes are doing well is they're doing a really great job of being very comfortable shoes to run in and neither of them are puffy at all. Well, there's a little bit of puffiness in the DV8 Nitro. There's these bumper pads that are back here that are just these kind of like two curved strips of foam on each side. They're gonna sit right underneath the ankles so that way your heel isn't moving around too much. And there's only a very slight amount of padding on the tongue. In the 1080 version 11, there's again a very slightly padded tongue. There's a little bit of padding around this ultra heel area, but it's not super thick pads of cushioning it's not a super fat tongue. It's a really comfortable upper and uh, a foot cage that really keeps that foot locked in. Going back to the DV8 Nitro, they're not using a knit material here. It's actually kind of a dual layer system where you've got this very breathable mesh up top, super thin. There's portions of it where it's only single layer and you can pretty much see through it. And then underneath that, there's a neoprene-like stretchy material that's very, very thin, also very breathable. That's kind of giving a little bit more structure and support to the forefoot. Now in the forefoot and in the midfoot cage, I feel like I'm really loving the way that Puma has put this shoe together. But in this area where the bumper pads are towards the heel cup back here, I feel like there's maybe not enough to keep my foot locked in. So at the kind of intended paces of this shoe, where I think this shoe really just likes to be at moderate pace, marathon pace, I feel like it's fine. I don't really notice a problem at all. But if I do end up going faster than that, like for my strides today, I feel like there's just a little bit of play going on in the heel, which I'm fine with, but I definitely notice it. It's a lot noticeable than some other shoes that have a little bit of looseness in the heel that I've noticed. So for those of you who really have a hard time with shoes that are too loose in the heel, this might be something that you wanna try on first before you go out and pick it up because it is noticeable. So hop on the treadmill at that running store and see if you can run a little bit in it and see if it's gonna be an issue for you. As far as outsole grip goes, I think that this Puma grip is super legit. Uh, I love what they've done with it. I normally don't like shoes that have this much rubber coverage on the outsole. I'm usually complaining that all it does is add weight. I don't feel like it's doing anything for me, but I do feel like this outsole is nice and grippy and I don't feel like this shoe overall is all that heavy. Now for a nitro foam shoe, I normally think that those shoes are a little bit lighter. And so it's a little bit heavier than kind of I initially thought it might be like, what I thought the shoe might feel like and actually picking it up for the first time. But once it's on foot, it doesn't feel like a heavy shoe at all. And compared to a lot of other just daily training shoes out there, not even in the max cushion category, but in the daily training, both of these shoes coming in at the low to mid nines definitely puts them on the lighter end for their category, but in the average range for all daily training shoes put together. So not gonna really complain too much even with this much rubber coverage on the outsole. It's not to say that the 1080 version 11 outsole is bad, but for this much rubber, I would just 
felt like there should be more grip and I just feel like I'm not sure how much a lot of this rubber is doing anything for me in the grip department. And I think part of the reason why there is so much rubber coverage on this outsole is just to protect the midsole material so that you're not running directly on it. It's gonna help with longevity. Now when it comes to the midsole in terms of which one I prefer, generally I really love nitro type foams. I just think they're really exciting to get moving in once you move faster. I think of these nitro foams almost like kind of like tires in a racing situation. If you follow like car racing or motorcycle racing, you know, they always talk about cold tires versus warm tires. Like the tires aren't fully grippy until they reach like a certain level of heat, which usually requires like a lap or two. Sometimes they put like those electric blankets over the tires to make sure they keep maintained at a certain level of heat. I feel like nitro foams are that way too, but not with heat, but with speed. I feel like you have to put in like a certain amount of force into these nitro foams for them to really become alive and like loosen up and be able to do all the absorption that they're supposed to be doing in terms of impact. And then all the pushing that they're supposed to be doing in terms of springing back on your toe off through your gait cycle. And so that's why I really do find the Puma DV8 Nitro an interesting shoe. But as far as a max cushion shoe goes, it's not my favorite max cushion shoe because when I reach for a max cushion shoe, I want something that I can use hopefully for a recovery run, but mainly for a nice and easy long run. So I feel like because this shoe doesn't really become interesting to me until I start moving a little bit faster, it limits a little bit of the kind of versatility of the shoe. On the other hand, I feel like the 1080 version 11 is a much more versatile shoe. Now, I wouldn't reach for this shoe for my recovery days either. Like when my feet are beat up, normally like the 1080 V10, that's a shoe that I would reach for on a recovery day. The 1080 version 11, the slight changes that they made to it, especially in terms of what it feels like in the forefoot, don't make it feel like a recovery day shoe, but it does make it a really great cushioned daily trainer. So if anything that I would take for kind of a daily trainer for, an easy run, a long run, maybe even a moderate pace run, something with some a little burst of speed here and there. The 1080 version 11 can also do really well while giving you a little bit more cushion than you might get in a standard daily trainer. So because this is a head-to-head -head video, I am gonna pick a winner of these two shoes. And for this one, I'm picking the 1080 version 11. While there's a lot of new flash and sizzle with the Puma DV8 Nitro, it's a new exciting shoe from Puma that's trying to reinvigorate itself for this year. Because of the fact that there's just so much more versatility in this 1080 version 11, that's why I'm gonna pick it, given that both of these shoes are coming at me from the max cushion category. Now, it is really exciting to see a shoe that is kind of max cushion, but also has a carbon fiber plate and it can be used to pick up the pace. I feel like for that use case, I've been using just my regular carbon plated racers for that. So maybe that's me and my unique situation where I do have carbon plated racers available to me, but that's essentially what this shoe is gonna be competing with in terms of like time on feet in my rotation and the way that I run. So in a sense, like it's an interesting attempt by Puma to try and shift the category or differentiate itself from other max cushion shoes, but it differentiate itself in a direction where it's start now starting to compete with a whole different genre of shoe that does, I think what the Puma DV8 Nitro is trying to do, but maybe does it a little bit better. So uh, I'm not completely knocking the shoe. I'm not saying it's a terrible shoe at all. I'm starting to really, really like it the more that I run in it. But for today in this head to head, the crown goes to the 1080 version 11. So those are my thoughts on these shoes. shoes head to head. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or have any other questions. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to answer any questions you have there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?